So to get this done by deadline, now we're going to work to seam these different elements together. And before we do that, the, the simplest thing to do is to play with those direct adjustments, right? So I'm going to go from the closest to our eye, which is the arm here, to the furthest back. So I'm going to start with the arm. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. I'm going to take my head as a given, but this is all uh, overlapping to help transition. So I'm not trying to match this exactly. I'm not trying to make this arm that green, but I'm trying to get it in line. So first I play with brightness, shadows. Do I want it a little bit brighter? If it's the arm, it might need to go a little bit brighter and out. I might limit the shadows just a tiny bit, limit the highlights just a tiny bit. Then go to color balance, which to me is always my favorite. It's kind of where the magic happens of things being in a similar light condition. But you have to play around with it. So here I have to add a lot of blues to the, the mid-tones because there's so much yellow already in that exposure. Don't need much red in the highlights. Don't need much yellow in the highlights. Maybe even push it huh, just a tiny bit towards magenta. Then in the shadows, I think more cyan is going to help. Yeah. Going to deaden those yellows a little bit. If I want more contrast, I could push the blue shadows, but I shouldn't push it too much. And maybe a little bit more magenta in the shadows. Now you can see the difference between that arm and the thing it was taken from. It's starting to be a little bit more believable. Now I'm going to go to the belly. I'm going to play with it in terms of levels. And I'm going to try deepening those midtones just a little bit and limiting those highlights because there's some really strong highlights here that I'm going to be blending out anyway. I can play with darkening some of the shadows. Then just ever so slightly limiting those shadows. Then I can go to color balance. And the idea is this is kind of a rock slug. Sludge monster. To be very contrasted with the candy land. So I want that, that color to still be there. but I don't want it to be super intense. So I'm going to warm up the midtones just slightly, but then take the shadows, cool them down quite a bit. Then take the highlights, warm them up. But not so much that it's just glowing. And distracting. So right about there, which isn't too different from where we started, but makes a difference. Okay, now the back of the toad. I actually want to make it look a little different than the arm. So even though it's from the same source, levels, bless you, I'm going to limit the highlights somewhat. It is the back. Goose the shadows a little bit, and I just darken the midtones just ever so slightly. Go to color balance, get it away from the yellows. There we go, maybe more towards the reds. Highlights, let's cool them down. Okay. And then the slug underneath. Levels. In some ways, it's catching more light because it's like at the bottom, but there's going to be a lot of burning. So I don't want it to go too light, so I'm actually darkening the midtones overall. 
while brightening up the highlights. And I can limit those highlights slightly too, but not too much. Now my favorite color balance. If you're not playing with color balance, you're not getting the best composite you could otherwise get. You just aren't. There we go. Adding that blue into there. That helps things to start sit sit together a little bit better. There's a lot of hidden color content in these references. You're not aware of it until you kind of push these sliders back and forth and see what you get. So big shifts. Okay, now I'm going to start transitioning a little bit. First, I'm going to take the bottom layer of my head. And you see how it almost works without it. And I transition from this neck into this shoulder. So it's good to have that kind of overlap. First thing I do, I'm erasing from this layer, is I use my eraser at 100% opacity with a soft edge. And the first thing I do before blending is I get rid of that hard edge. So that there's only kind of a blended softness. I don't want any kind of hint of a horizontal straight line, right? I can get rid of a lot of this because I don't need it. And you need 100% opacity. Okay, now I've done it at 100%. I've kind of cut back my edge, revealed these bumpy structures. Now to start blending it in, I'm going to use lower opacity, maybe like 40%. Still soft edge, still big. And then just start erasing away at lower opacities. And it starts to blend the color and the texture at the same time. And it works best where the things kind of overlap in a way that makes sense. Like the color of these feathers with the color of this lava. Those kind of work. And then these little toad bumps become almost like peacock uh, feather ornaments as they start to blend in. Now, I'm not so fond of this really, really dark part here, but I'm also not so fond of how out of focus that part of my bird reference is. So you kind of make choices. What edge do you want to keep? How much do you want to blend it? And then if you feel like you're over softening by doing this, which can happen, you can go back and use the sharpen tool. Pretty large, 0% hardness, right on that same layer that you are erasing from. Because when you erase, you can use the sharpen tool to then bring back contrast on those pixels, but because they're soft edged, the sharpening tool is right above dodge and burn. It's where blur is and sharpen. And we haven't used smudge yet, but these are all kind of the fine, direct, you know, useful uh, tools. If you feel like as you're blending and erasing, you're getting rid of too much. It's all the contents there, all the pixel contents there. It might just lose its sharp edge. And so you can bring that back. 
Okay. So we've transitioned that. Now I can get rid of a lot of this background that I don't need just with my lasso. I don't need the head of that frog, but I do need this back. I'll go ahead and cut that off. And then I can do a finer tune or finer selection with the magic wand just right here. And it's a little too similar, like I was saying. So I might use the magic wand and then hold down option with my regular lasso to subtract from that magic wand. Kind of drawing my own line here. Don't need to make it match perfectly. But that subtracts, so it won't delete the things I need. And then for the rest, I can use Select and Mask, very slight 0.8 pixel feather, delete, delete, delete. And then if there's any remnants left over like this, I can just use my lasso to get them. Oh, you know what? That black, that's, that's red, I kind of remember. That black comes from the arm on the back. So this is actually fun because I internally composited. This works really, really well. It makes it look like it's kind of a stripe. I can actually start with 100% opacity, but I can get rid of that hard edge that's still that arm connected. with 100% opacity and then go back to a lower percentage like around 40 and start blending that in. Fill in some of those shadows with a little bit more of that texture. So just understanding all of where your layers are coming from It's the key to compositing. A little bit more feather subtracted there. Let's see what's under here. I want that to show instead. Show a little bit of feather, but not much. All right, so transitioning. Save my work. I can always go in with the sponge tool and desaturate some of this too to make it match. So sponge, nice and big, desaturate, less than 20. Let's get rid of some of this green, bring it more into the grays. It will still look green as it goes up into the head. But that green is actually really helpful because it makes that red pop so much more. I just don't need it to be so saturated. So instead of using hue saturation, now I'm doing it in a targeted way with this sponge tool. And maybe use a little bit of the burn tool where I need it to darken with the shoulder or under the jaw. All right, next. The other side of the arm. I can actually use the dodge tool and brighten it up. So less than 20. Nice big brush, 0% hardness. Going to brighten up the...